Alrighty, so it is 7 o'clock, so I can, I guess we should get started. So earlier, I put up a poll that said, do you play a musical instrument? And I asked this because our topic today kind of has to do with music. And so for those who have chose yes, I would like to know what musical instrument that you play. So you can let me know in the chat uh, if you chose yes, then you can tell, uh, let me know what musical instrument that you play. Kind of curious. Okay, so it even says flute. Anyone else? Ryan says ukulele. Nice. Kyvin does violin. Nice. See, uh, Sean does piano. Yeah, that is very common. I also do piano. Uh, okay, cool. So the reason I'm asking is, again, it's related to music. And today's topic is called The Coolest Music in the World. And behind this text I have a little picture. And I want you to take a closer look at it. We have all these microphones here. There's this person over here. Take a look. What is? What are all these instruments made out of? It's made of ice. Ice? Yes, it is made out of ice. And also we have a little wordplay here. You know, ice is very cold, so it's cool, right? Of course, it's debatable whether it's the coolest, right? But anyway, uh, that's what today's article is called. And uh, before we get to it, I want to go over what we're doing today. Uh, first of all, I'm going to do a little, of course, um, some pronunciation, go over the article, some discussion questions. I also have a little uh, vocabulary lesson about connotation, which is like uh, the feelings of words. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, after that, uh, if we have any time, we can do a little kahoot. Okay, so with that said, let's get started. So over here, uh, I have six words. The first one is sculptor, which is the person who uh, makes sculptures or like molds uh, different kinds of materials. And it's pronounced sculptor. This C is a hard C, and we're emphasizing on this first syllable. Uh, the second one is orchestra. The C and the H make a hard C again. So it's not an orchestra, it's an orchestra, orchestra. And again, emphasizing on that first syllable. Next one, we have chisel. Next is the C and the H. Uh, rather than uh, compared to the first two, it's more like a ch sound, like when you sneeze, or I don't know, ch. It's a ch sound, so it's chisel. And a chisel is like a tool that's used to like uh, cut wood or cut stone. and. Uh, in this article, you'll see uh, the person uses a chisel to like carve the ice. Okay, and the next one is a cello. Uh, some of you may know that this is a type of instrument. Uh, the C, the C is actually kind of a little uh, off track, or it's not pronounced as a hard C. It's pronounced as a C and the H. So we have a lot of C and CH sounds here. Uh, it's not pronounced as a cello. It's a cello. Again, emphasizing on that first syllable. Okay. Next we have acoustics. Uh, uh, we're here with the O and the U make a double O sound, so it's O acoustics. Emphasizing on that syllable, second syllable, so it's acoustics. And lastly, we have Fahrenheit, which, as you probably know, is the uh, imperial system of measuring temperature. Uh, in can here in Canada, we use the metric system, like meters, degrees Celsius, things like that. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all these little hints here. I'm going to ask some volunteers to pronounce these words. So, uh, Garius, can you pronounce this first word here, please? Oops. Sorry. Sculpture. Sculpture. Okay, so uh, this one actually is sculptor. So it's the thing itself, not the sculpt. I mean, it's the person who does it, not the thing itself. Uh, yes, Ryan? Can I say the next word? Uh, sure. Uh, go ahead. Orchestra. Mm -hmm, very close. Orchestra. Orchestra. Okay. So, uh, emphasizing on that first syllable. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Kaivan, can you uh, pronounce this third one, please? Mm -hmm. Chisel. Very good. Uh, Jordan, pronounce uh, this one. Mm 
I think I have some trouble hearing you, Jordan. Uh, see, uh, Sean, would you like to uh, pronounce this word? Is this cello? So I went over this. Uh, it's actually cello. It makes a ch sound. I know it's a little confusing with the c, but it's it's kind of like uh, an outlier of all those uh, letter pronunciations. It's a ch sound, so it's cello. Okay, but good try there. Uh, what was this here? Henry, can you pronounce this word over here? So, this one. Okay, I guess Ryan can do it. Go ahead, Ryan. Let me for the next word. Uh, okay, so you can do this last one. Fahrenheit? Yes, very good. It is Fahrenheit. So, this H is not pronounced. Can I have Leilu? Can you pronounce uh, this one over here? Asco acoustics. Mm -hmm. Acoustics. Yes, very good. I like how you kind of sounded it out. It is acoustics. Very nice. Okay, uh, let's go down to our little article. It's called The Coolest Music in the World, uh, published by Gail Hennessy in 2021. I'll start with this little piece of text over here. In the Arctic, the northernmost part of the Earth, it is extremely cold and icy, and during the winter there are periods of almost constant night. In this text, a clever ice sculptor makes ice instruments, or instruments made from ice and snow. So there's a little piece of text to introduce to you what this article is about. Okay, so, do you play a musical instrument? Could you imagine playing one made from ice? Tim Blenhart is an American ice sculptor who has created a small orchestra of ice instruments. The performances have been entertaining people for more than 20 years. So over here, we're kind of getting an introduction uh, to what this article is about. First, it asks the reader, which is you, uh, whether or not they play a musical instrument, which kind of gives a little connection there between the author and the reader. And, and then it kind of grabs your attention, like imagine playing one made from ice. Right? Like, it sounds pretty cool. And then it, over here in this little paragraph, it says that Tim Linhart, who is an ice sculptor, has created a little orchestra made of these ice instruments. And they have been entertaining people for more than 20 years. It is kind of a long time for such a passion like that. Okay. Uh, Ryan, would you like to continue over here? I see your hand you is mean... raised. Okay. Linhart, first I. Ice instrument was a giant violin. That's 10 feet, three meters tall. A friend of mine made guitars. And I thought, I wonder what instrument will sound like if from ice and snow. He said. Then I got to work with his ice instrument. He just blasting from old, from old piano. Man, plug. The stream my ice violin. The sound was good. Unfortunately, when I tightened the string to make a louder sound, my violin exploded into thousand pieces. Uh -oh. That is mm -hmm. that experience just made him more determined. Determined. Determined to play ice instrument. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much for reading that. So over here it says that. His first instrument was a giant violin, as you can see in this picture here. It's very, very large, almost as tall himself, tall as himself, which is like 10 feet or 3 meters. So he said uh, the way he started creating these ice instruments is when, like, his friend, he made, uh, he made guitars. And then one day he thought, like, what, how does an instrument made of ice, how would that sound? So he got to work, uh, since he had, like, experience with sculpturing ice and snow, right? So uh, he got to work with creating this little ice, uh, this large ice instrument, right? Uh, and then he said, uh, when he plucked the strings of my ice violin, violin, the sound was great. But then when he tightened it a bit too much, it exploded. But all of this was a little, mm, a little bump there. Uh, it just made him more determined to create ice instruments. So there's his little inspiration. Okay. Uh, oops. Okay, uh, T.T. Sun, would you like to continue in this paragraph? 
Then Hart uses white ice, a mixture of snow and water. He also gathers clear ice from nearby rivers and lakes. He lives near the Arctic Circle, so that isn't a problem. With a chainsaw, he harvests the ice to carve into a musical instrument. You have to dig about 8 inches, 20 centimeters down into the frozen lake to get all the ice, he says. His okay. other tools include chisels, shavers, and drinking straws. The straws help the steel cracks. Blowing into the straw, he melts the ice a bit with the heat from his breath. Then he rubs it loosely. His glue is water. Okay, thank you, TP Sun. So over here, we kind of get a little perspective on how Linhart creates these instruments. So over here, it says he uses white ice, which is a mixture of snow and water. Uh, he also gathers clear ice from nearby rivers and lakes. Okay, not a problem there because he lives near the Arctic Circle. And then he uses this little tool here, which is a chainsaw, and he harvests this ice that he'll later on carve into a, me a musical instrument. And then he says, you have to take about 8 inches, which is 20 centimeters, down into the frozen lake to get bubble free ice. So it's kind of like creating or making an uh, instrument itself. You need like good materials, right? Uh, you don't want to use cheap materials to make an instrument or it won't uh, last for, ver for a very long time. And then the second little paragraph, it says that his other tools include these, like chisels, shavers, and drinking straws. And the purpose for a drinking straw is to help seal cracks. Like with his warm breath, he can heat it up a bit and then let it refreeze. Okay, like that. And then his glue is water, which I'm sure, like, you know, in the winter, maybe you've had some experience with snow and ice. Like, uh, if you put water on snow and then let it freeze for a bit, it's actually going to stick together real nice. So, yeah. Uh, so, snow and ice and water really go well together. Okay, uh, Kaiben, you can go ahead and continue over here. An intense sound. The name of Linhart's orchestra is Ice Music. Instruments in Ice Music include violin, viola, cello, upright, pass, banjo, mandolin, guitar, drums, and xylophone. Mm -hmm. So here we're just uh, naming some instruments that uh, he creates, like the violin, the viola, the cello, the upright bass, banjo, mandolin, guitar, drums, and xylophone, which is very diverse, uh, considering it's all made of ice and snow, which is very cool. So over here I have a little picture of uh, some performers in these ice instruments. Uh, you might notice, like, this is a guitar, or this is a little violin. And you might notice it's like glowing pinkish purple. And that's actually because, it's not because the snow is glowing, but it's actually because uh, Linhart adds some LEDs or light emitting diodes in these. So they're, so they light up, you know, you don't want to be playing in the dark, right? We're in the Arctic, so it gets dark there. So that's why he uses those LEDs. Again, it looks cool. And also you can see the instruments, okay? So that's kind of the purpose for these, uh, lights inside the instruments. Uh, Titi Sen, would you like to continue in this paragraph? No? Okay. Uh, Lelu, would you like to continue there? Okay, uh, Sean, would you like to continue over here? Starting up here. There. Mm -hmm. Then part has a creator, what is called cause, a roller phone, it's in percussion. Percussion. Uh, it's in percussion, what? Uh, percussion. Instrument made up of 44 tubes, and every tube plays different notes. You hit the top each tube. <laughs> like you would a drum he said it's like a very it's seven fifteen plan food some of the tools are uh of a rolando phone rolando phone are six feet 1.8 meters long or more the smallest tube are about 10 inches 
25.4 centimeters. Okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, I mean, Sean, sorry. So, uh, one thing I'd like to point out is uh, when you read out loud and you come to like a period, for example, I'd like you to pause, okay, because that's what a period is for. It's noting the end of the sentence, okay. So, uh, you would say it like this. Linhart has also created what he has, what he calls a of phone. Pause. It's a percussion instrument, la di da di da Okay, so you pause there, and then you continue. Kind of like uh, when you're in, driving in a car, right, you stop at a red light, and then uh, you uh, start up, start up again. Okay? Okay, thank you, Sean. So over here, he's uh, introducing another instrument, which is called a Rolando phone, which is what he calls that. And it's like a percussion instrument, which is like what you hit, uh, you hit it, and it creates a sound. And it's about 44 tubes, and each one plays a different note. So it's kind of like a xylophone, I'd say. Uh, you would hit it like a drum, and it's like a very large pan flute. Uh, some of the tubes of them are 6 feet, which is like 1.8 meters, which is kind of long there. And some of them are even longer than that. And the smallest tubes are about 10 inches, which is 25.4 centimeters. So just some little facts there. Okay. And I guess I can continue over here. So, Linhart likes the acoustics of ice. Wood is soft and absorbs a lot of an instrument's sounds, uh, sound vibrations. Ice absorbs the vibrations too, but not as much. This makes for a very sharp sound. Ice instruments produce a sound you can feel more intensely in your body. So, uh, this is kind of comparing and contrasting with normal instruments and ice instruments. And so, uh, it says that wood is soft and it absorbs an instrument's sounds or sound vibrations, but on the other hand, ice absorbs the vibrations, but not as much. So this kind of creates a more sharp sound, okay? And it's something that you can kind of feel the vibration in your entire body, which uh, I think it's pretty interesting since it's like a different material, okay? Uh, who would like to continue over here? Mm, Jilin, why don't you go ahead here, starting this. Jason, why don't you start over here? Jason, are you there? What? Uh, can you start reading over here, please? The heart and heart says the instrument have a, have a sound that becomes louder and sweeter as they're played. The instruments are very fragile. Even the warmth of a musician's breath can cause the sound to change. So the uh, instrument needs to be returned between each piece of music. Backup instruments are kept on hand in, in case one breaks, but some can be repaired with just a bit of water. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jason. Very good reading. So over here, it continues with the fact that uh, like the sound of the instruments. So from here it says that they have a sound that becomes louder and sweeter as they're played. So it's kind of like the ice is changing a bit when it's being played. Like uh, at first it's really cold and hard, then as you start to play and the uh, strings, for example, they, uh, they're, they're kind of warmed up, they get louder and sweeter. And then over here it says the instruments are also very fragile. Uh, does anyone know what the word fragile means? So what does fragile mean? Uh, yes, uh, Kyrin? Easy to break. Mm -hmm, exactly, it's really easy to break. Uh, Brian, did you have anything to add there? I'll just say, I'll just want to say that. Mm -hmm, yeah, so it's really easy to break. Yeah, so you're, you're both right there. So, uh, because they're made of ice, they're really easy to break, and also it's really easy to melt them because we have warm bodies, we're warm-blooded creatures, so when we're near ice, we kind of tend to melt uh, ice. So they often change uh, when they're being played. So that's why backup instruments are kept in hand when they break, or if they break, but some can be repaired with just a bit of water because remember early on it said that uh, uh, Linhart uses water 
like glue, right? It sticks to get, it sticks nice together uh, when it uh, freezes. So yeah, it's really not a big deal if one breaks. Uh, you can have backup or you can just repair it. Okay, uh, let's move on. Okay, uh, Nicole, would you like to uh, continue in this paragraph here? Wait, where do I start? Uh, in this highlighted red area. Oh, mo freezing cold concert halls. Mo's performances by ice music take place in a suspic Specially? Sus specially created concert hall in Lillina in northern Sweden. The hall seat up to seats up to 200 people. The temperature inside is about 23 degrees Fahrenheit or my negative 5 degrees Celsius. The audience is encouraged to wear several several layers of clothing, hat, and gloves. Body heat and breathing to melt the instrument. So Linhart designed the hall as two igloos connected with the stage in the middle, a hole above each side of the audience of the audience acts as a chimney, allowing heat to escape, but the concert hall cannot last through the warm season. It must be rebuilt every winter. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Uh, again, I'd like to point out that uh, when you read out loud, when you come to like a period or a comma, be sure to pause before you start up again. Okay, so just a little note there. So in this paragraph, uh, it goes on to how or the area where they play it. Yes, Kaifin? Would you like to add anything? Question, comment? I want to read. Uh, okay, I'll let you read uh, after I uh, finish explaining this. So, um, over here it says that the hall seats up to 200 people, and uh, the temperature inside is like negative 5 degrees Celsius, so it's kind of freezing there. So the audience is encouraged to wear several layers of clothes, like hats and gloves and things like that. And also it says that the body heat and breathing can melt the instruments because ice, uh, they melt at like, mm, well, they melt when the temperature goes up, right? Uh, so uh, because of this, uh, because ice melts when the temperature goes up, uh, Linhart decided, or he designed the hall as two igloos, which you know is like two little domes made out of ice. Okay, and then there is like, uh, they're both connected with a stage in the middle so, as you can see in this picture, we have the audience over here, and we also have the performance, uh, the performers on the stage. Okay, and it's actually kind of large. We have about 200. You can put like 200 people there, right? Uh, and also we have a little hole above each side of the audience. So we have, I think there's an audience here, and then there's another audience somewhere behind. Uh, so like there's, they act kind of like that as a little chimney, so the heat can escape. It's not just stuck in this area. And also because, like, although it's in the Arctic, it can't last through the warm season, so it's molted, so it must be rebuilt every winter. Okay, uh, and Kyran, you can go ahead and finish off over here. Ice music concerts have taken place in other places around the world. Friend High has recently built an 80-foot-high, 24.4-meter-high cathedral like hall inside a glacier in the Italian Alps. When winter ends, Lindheim tries to freeze some of the instruments in his freeze house for the next year's performances. Others that are too warm to that two worn are allowed to melt in the sun. Okay, excellent reading there, Kaivin. So over here, uh, it goes on to say that they take place in other parts, uh, in other places in the world. Uh, for example, uh, Lin he Linhart has recently built an 80 foot high, which is 24.4 meters. It's like a cathedral, which is like a really important church uh, inside a glacier in the Italian Alps. So that's not quite in the Arctic Circle, but still pretty north. So it's still kind of cold there. So uh, 
yeah, that's a place where he recently built a little hall there where he can do his ice music. And then in the last little part, it says, when winter ends, he tries to freeze some of the instruments in his little freeze house for the next year's performances. And then others that are too worn out to repair, uh, you know, you don't want to repair anything that's too broken. Uh, they're allowed to melt in the sun. And there's the end of the article. So I hope you enjoyed that, learned something new. I definitely found this very interesting, right? Uh, do we have any uh, questions, comments about this? Uh, actually, we don't have a book today. I have a little kahoot, okay? And we'll do that if we have time. Okay, okay, okay. All right, uh, here's just some instrument facts. Uh, that wasn't really mentioned in the article, but just to give you a little more perspective. Okay. The first one, to keep the instruments from melting, the musicians perform on a special, specially constructed stage, which they call a giant cosmic igloo. So it's like this really big igloo, it's really big, it's cosmic, okay. so that's what they call it. Second point, it can take a week to freeze and build each instrument out of ice. So it takes like about seven days to make each instrument. Third one, these instruments are so heavy that some are needed some need to be attached to the roof for support and safety. So you might have noticed uh, in this picture, we have this violinist, we have these strings, they're actually attached to the roof of the uh, of that building, and that's because if you think about it, if you tried to like, in the winter, if you tried to lift up a snowball, they're actually pretty heavy if you make it large enough. So instead of having the musician to hold it up for the entire performance, uh, for their safety, uh, they actually put it on these strings, so they ha don't have to uh, use all that uh, strength just to hold it up and w while they play. Okay, so it's just for their safety. Uh, they sometimes they have these strings that help support uh, the instrument. Okay, uh, fourth one. Tim Blenhart has created 19 ice orchestras in 11 igloo-style ice music concert halls in places from Lulea, Sweden, to the Italian Alps. So just a little quite a bit of numbers there. I got 19 ice orchestras, that's a lot. Also 11 igloo style ice music concert halls. I uh, imagine imagine trying to make 11 igloos, right? That's a lot. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. And also last one, players can't practice on their instruments because of the warm of their warm bodies. So they often compose, compose music live and, impro and improvise in front of the audience. Uh, does anyone know what improvise means? So, what's improvising? Anybody? You can type it in the chat if you want. So, what does it mean to improvise? This word over here, based on this context. Okay, so Nancy says to create. Uh, pretty close there, so uh, you can see that they often compose music live in front of the audience. So improvising is kind of like acting uh, live. You create something uh, that wasn't like a plan before, so you kind of do it on the spot. So because these instruments, they kind of get worn out as you play it, they kind of melt over time. So because these players can't pr uh, practice together like that, they often have to Probably they have to discuss it beforehand, right? And then improvise in front of the audience, which I think takes a bit of skill there, right? Uh, Jason says, without practice, yeah, in the right track there. So uh, it's all done on the spot. Uh, you're not planning beforehand, right? Without practice. Okay. So there's just some nice fun facts there. Okay, uh, some multiple choice questions. Tim Linhart began making ice instruments because A, his friend dared him to do it. B. No one has done it before. C. People said it was impossible. Or D. He was curious about how they would sound. A, B, C, or D. D. <laughs> hmm. Okay, uh, please don't spam in the chat. Just one response is enough, please. Okay, most of your It's 7.30. Or A. Well, the, uh, the answer is actually D. Uh, for the first one, it's actually, uh, he actually wasn't dared. It was more like a discussion between his friend, because remember his friend, he made guitars, and Tim Linhart, 
He was curious about how they would sound, so the answer is D. Okay. Next question. What does Linhart like about the ice instruments? A. That the ice creates a soft and gentle tone. B. That they are much stronger than people think. C. That they have a strong and high-pitched sound. Or D. That the ice is best for making just one type of instrument. Which one is it? Okay, we're saying A. Mm, just run answer, please, right? <laughs> Nancy says C, A. Okay, please don't spam with the chat. One answer is enough. Okay, I think we have to go back to the article. Um, so, uh, I think it was early on it said. So over here he says, uh, wood is soft, it absorbs a lot of an instrument's sound vibrations, right? So it absorbs it, so it's soft, but ice absorbs it too, but not as much. So this creates a very sharp sound. Okay, so there's your answer. Let's go back to the question. Uh, so which one is it? Aha, there we go. The answer is C. They have a strong and high-pitched sound. It's not soft, okay? Ice is more hard. It's strong and high-pitched, okay? Okay, and last question. Ice music concerts, A, take place every year in both Sweden and the Italian Alps. B, take place in special buildings that are recreated each year. C, were popular for a while but have become less popular over time. Or D, can now be performed anywhere with excellent air conditioning. Which one is it? D, B, A. <laughs> well, it's not uh, D. It cannot be performed anywhere with excellent air conditioning, or we would have that already in our homes. Okay, most of your listening. A. Hmm. Well, actually, the answer is not A. It's actually B. They take place in special buildings that are recreated each year. I know that A is a little misleading. Like, uh, I know the article talked about the Italian Alps and in Sweden. And I can it can actually occur in anywhere in the world, like the article said. It just needs to be in this special building where it's cold, like negative 5 degrees Celsius, that are recreated each year. Okay, because of the warm uh, season, it's going to melt, so you have to re recreate it there. Okay? So don't be a little misled, misled by these answers. All right, uh, some vocabulary. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six words. And connect the right definition. And also this N stands for noun, which is a person, place, thing, or idea. So uh, what is orchestra? Yes, Ryan? A group of music museums who play different instruments and perform together. Mm -hmm. Very good. That is the answer. What about performance? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jillette. Um, A concert or show performed for an audience. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's the answer. Uh, chisel. Uh, Ryan, go ahead. For chisel? Mm -hmm. A tool for cutting lawn. Met, no, a tooth long metal blade for cutting wood, stone, example. Mm -hmm. That's an etc. so it stands for and so on. So, very good. That's the answer. Intense. Uh, Jason, what's the definition for intense? What did you say? Uh, what's the definition of the word intense? The intense is like having to do with wait no at like having a great degree of something no that way mm -hmm. yes so it is having a great degree of something it's really strong like a strong emotion or a strong sense or something or a strong sound okay very good uh let's take acoustics go ahead ryan 
Have you a great degrees of something stone in that exam? Mm, not quite. That was the answer for intense. So, intense is really strong. What about acoustics? Think about sound. You're on the right track. It does have to Wait. do with sound. Uh, having to do with how sound. Mm -hmm. So it's having to do with how sound is created and delivered. Right? So you're right there. Okay, thank you, Brian. And last one, uh, Chilin, you can go ahead with Cathedral. A large and important church. Mm -hmm. So a cathedral is a large and important church. Okay, very good job on this vocabulary. Okay, uh, now I have a little lesson on connotation, which is which has to do with words. Okay, and as I mentioned before, it's like how words feel. Like it's the suggested meaning by word. And I know that's there very clear. So let me give an example. Here I have two words: fragile and brittle. As you know, they are very similar. They both mean uh, easily damaged or broken, but given context, they kind of give different feelings. Okay, so uh, easily damaged and broken is the de is the dictionary definition, but in context, like the connotation, is a little different. So here we have the instruments are very fragile and the instruments are very brittle, so gives a little different feeling, right? The first one to, uh, kind of implies need for careful handling. It's like really extremely delicate. But for the second one, it's implies, it implies hardness or lack of flexibility. Like if you take hard rubber or like uh, really old rubber bands, they're very brittle, they kind of uh, crumble in your fingers. They're fragile, kind of, it's more like a delicate delicacy, like a delicate flower. But flowers are not brittle, right? There isn't no such thing as a, a brittle flower. So all the, these two words have similar denotation they have opposite, or they have very different connotation. Okay, so let's do some practice over here. Uh, I, I have a word, I mean, I have a sentence over here, and I'd like you to pick the word that best fits this sentence. So, since he wanted to leave work early, he felt some blank to work quickly. Is it A, coercion, B, pressure, C, fear, or D, intimidation? All these four words have the same or similar denotation, they have different connotation. So which one is it? Which one best fits this context? Pressure? Mm-hmm. So you can type it in the chat. Which one do you think it is? Okay, Ryan says pressure. Dylan also says B. Gary says B. All right, so you are both, uh, all of you are correct. It is pressure. Coercion is more like being someone forcing you to do something, but in the sentence, we're only focusing on this one person uh, who wants to leave early, right? Okay, uh, next one. After cleaning it for over an hour, the room was blank without a speck of dirt. So, uh, without is like perfectly clean. So, is it A, blue, B, immaculate, C, clear, or D, washed? Most of you are saying C, even is saying blue. Gary C, Nancy B. Hmm. Okay, so let me give you the definition of each one. Blue is like, it also has, it's the color blue, but it's also, it also gives a kind of denotation of being clean. Immaculate, it means spotless, so it's perfectly clean. Clear is like a clear window, or uh, it's also spotless, but you can see through. And D is washed, like, you're washing clothes. It's just washed, not uh, dirty. So which one is it? <laughs> right, so even said us. Can you see through the floor? It's not clear, exactly. So it's not C. So which one is it? Aha, there we go. It is B, like Ryan says. So after cleaning for over an hour, the room was immaculate without a speck of dirt. So it's spotless, perfectly clean, okay? And last one, Joe had taken his car for repair three times now and he was blank. It still was not working. Okay, so is it A, irked, B, inconvenienced, C, provoked, or D, angry? Which one is it? Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> two pilots. C, C. Uh, pick one answer, please, Ryan. Garris, I presume you're saying E, C, or D. Okay, well. It's C. C? Are you sure? I just. Yep. Oh. Okay. C or D. Well, actually, I try to think about it. If you have to repair something more than three times, and it still isn't working, how would you feel? Definitely not inconvenienced, right? Not provoked. Not hurt. So it must be angry. So the answer is actually D. Angry. Okay. So Joe had taken his car for his, for repair three times now, and he was angry. It still wasn't working. Simple as that. Okay. All right. You can stop scribbling on my screen now. Thank you. Let me just throw it in all these things. Okay, uh, here we have a video. It's from National Geographic. Uh, it's also narrated by Tim Plinhart himself, so which is pretty nice. And also, uh, you know, uh, it also, you know, have a chance to hear what ice instruments sound. So yeah, let's take a look. It was about 20 years ago when I built my first ice musical instrument on top of a mountain and I tightened the strings and I plucked on the wires and I heard the sound coming out from inside the instrument. And I was so excited by what I heard that I put on my skis, I skied all the way down to the village and I told them what had happened to me and how excited I was. They pretty much thought I was a kook. Well, on that day, I sort of had a dream, a vision of what could one day become. Welcome to my dream. The ice instrument is, is made of frozen water. We're made, made of melted water. And that physical connection opens the door for a spiritual connection. And for me, when I listen to an ice instrument, it, it, it just makes me happy. It's one thing to build an ice instrument, it's another thing to maintain it and use it throughout time. Uh, the ice is always sublimating away into the atmosphere. Players get up next to the instruments, you got hot bodies next to cold instruments and they're melting and uh, the audience walks in, suddenly the temperature rises because they're breathing. In that case, the, the <laughs> strings on the stringed instruments begin to get softer and the tuning, the pitch goes down on stringed instruments. On the pipe instruments, for instance, the, the uh, Rolandophone, uh, the, the tubes in the xylophone and so on, uh, those begin to go up. So you've got the orchestra going in two different directions. It took me quite a while really to understand that, that, that all of the tuning and all the, the, just the complete disaster was because of the temperature fluctuation and that eventually led me to realizing that I need to build my own architecture that can ventilate the heat from the audience away from the orchestra and that's how we came to the the basic design of the concert hall that we have with the two domes uh, which accommodates for letting out the heat of the audience and and uh, keeping the instruments in a cool you know I, I think of magic really the definition for me of magic is unbelievable but happening and I think that in the long run is the, is the kaboom possibility for it's ice to, uh, to really affect the world, the people of the world, uh, in, in this release of, of really joy when your disbelief dissolves. Without a song or dance, what are we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me.
Okay, and there's that video. I hope you enjoyed it. Right, and like even says, it is really awesome. Very cool. It's amazing how these instruments are made out of ice, right? Okay, uh, TT said, uh, we're not near Kahoot yet. We still have some questions to go over. Okay, so what do you think makes art beautiful? So you saw in the video, it's uh, the music, uh, right? So how do you know when a piece of art, like a painting, a piece of music, moving, or any other type of art is beautiful? So think about it. What makes it beautiful? Any characteristics? Garris' color. Okay, so like pleasing colors. Is that what you mean? Nancy says, makes you feel good. Mm hmm The design. Okay, so like the visual design. How good are you? Uh, how good it is? Knowing you tried your hardest. Okay. Mm, Jason, what do you mean by no? Mm. Skill. Okay, so, like, uh, the skill of the art? Like, uh, the skill of the person who, create, who created it? Yeah, okay. So, uh, if it's really skilled? Okay. So, uh, for me, I think... Uh, what makes art beautiful is something that's like really enjoyable like you want to hear it or look at it uh, it's not something that's meant to be uh, like unenjoyable or like scary things that's not really enjoyable for me uh, unless you like to watch horror movies or things like that uh, of course it just depends on your personality and your likes but I think just in general things that uh, things that are beautiful is something that you enjoy and it's really pleasing uh, last question here before we get on to our who okay guys uh, because ice is always sublimating away which means it's like always moving changing from a solid state to a gas state ice instruments are constantly repaired do you think it's worth it to keep maintaining the instruments condition so because we have to keep repairing them do you think it's worth it to keep uh, making these and uh, maintaining its condition Uh, Chilin, can I uh, pick on you? And I'd like to hear what you think about this. So, uh, do you think it's worth it to keep uh, like maintaining ice instruments? Or Kairin? So, yes, you think it is worth it, so why? Why do you think that way? Because it sounds good, and you can perform, and it could be in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it sounds really unique, right? Ice instruments are really unique, like we've seen on the video. Uh, it sounds really nice. Uh, Okay, so, but what about mm, normal instruments? You don't have to keep maintaining its condition. Of course, you have to clean it at all, but not like always constantly like ice. Anybody have anything to add here? Mm, Garris, what do you think? Yeah, I guess. I guess? Okay. Uh, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, because... You know, like, we, we do need to, like... We, we build the sound of the instrument. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you have to create the sound of the instrument? I'm sorry, I don't really quite understand what you're saying. Uh, could you like... 
or talk a bit more about that? Brian? Mm -hmm. So, well, I don't really quite understand that answer. Uh, could you uh, add on to that? So I mean, like, we don't need to, we don't need to make this sound again, like, the, the, like, because you, you want a very sweet, like, you want a sweet, so you just, yeah, if you mm -hmm. maintain it, it, the sweetness will be still the same. Mm -hmm. So, you're saying that ice instruments, they have a really sweet and unique sound, so it's, so it is worth it to keep its condition, right? Okay, yeah, I agree with you, because... Uh, ice instruments, they are very unique. Uh, they also produce a unique sound. And although it is kind of a little tedious to continue to maintain its condition, uh, yeah, it is still really beautiful to hear. And to hear all these instruments together, like in an orchestra. Okay. Uh, it is 7.51, so I guess we can move on to our Kahoot. Yay. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, can we do Monster Brow? Actually, we're doing a hoop, not a book it. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Well. So there's a link. Shows an ice instrument. Pretty easy here. Aha, everybody got it right. So it is this one. It has an LED in it. It's uh, lighting up blue. So yeah, this is an ice cave. This is these two are regular instruments, regular guitar and a violin. So, what is the main idea of this text? So, what is this text made of about? Okay, well, mm, only two of you got it right. And actually, uh, for those of you who chose blue, him, a sculptor became a musician after discovering his love for ice music. He actually didn't become an, a musician. He more created an uh, orchestra and, hi and hired these mus musicians to play. Okay, so he's the one that creates these instruments, but he doesn't play himself. So he's not a musician. He's more like the person behind uh, the performance. So the correct answer would be that Tim used his love for art to create an unusual musical experience. Okay, question three. How does the author organize the text? So going back to the format. Oh. 
Okay, so uh, the correct answer is actually you've read one. Uh, it's by subtopics that give important details on ice music. Uh, it's not blue. Uh, it's not explaining what caused him to make ice instruments. That was only one I'm little part. I'm new muffin. I'm new muffin. Okay. I got it right. I'm new muffin. <laughs> okay. Uh, good job, Jason. Then, but actually, it's uh, it was only talking about the blue one and one little paragraph. Uh, overall, it's talking about specific details on this ice music, like how Tim uh, was inspired by uh, his friend, and also uh, other factors like that. Okay. Oh, Jason is in the lead. So, what does fragile mean? Yeah, this one's an easy one. Uh, fragile means easily broken. Very good. True or false? Because the concert hall cannot last through the warm season, it must be rebuilt every winter. Oop. That was quick. And yes, it is true. So it can't last through the warm summer season, so it must be rebuilt. Jason is still in the lead. True or false, Linhart's first ice instrument was a giant violin. Yes. Hmm? So it is true. Uh, the first ever ice instrument that he created was that giant violin. It was like about three meters tall, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was pretty big. So, what evidence in the text supports Lenhart's claim that ice instruments are louder and higher pitched? So, it goes back to the text. Mm -hmm. So, it is the green answer, uh, since ice, ice absorb vibration but not as much as like wood instruments, this makes a very sharp sound. So that's that has to do with the sound of the in ice instruments. Uh, it's not red because that is uh, on a totally different topic. And the blue one, uh, it doesn't really explain why, or it doesn't really give evidence to uh, this text here. Okay. Although he likes it, it doesn't really have to do much with that. Uh, ice instruments are louder and higher pitched. Where does Tip Linhart get ice for his instruments? Mm -hmm. So uh, it is the yellow one. It's nearby rivers and lakes. It's not this green one because those are the tools that he uses to get ice. It's not where he gets them. And it's not really on a mountain. Uh, uh, the pair, I mean, the article talked more about it. he got them by uh, nearby rivers and lakes, not on a mountain. Because yeah, that's kind of a long way to go, you know? Like, mountains are really high and it's kind of hard to get up there. It's more easy to uh, get them by rivers and lakes. Changes. Okay, which sentence uses the word acoustics in Korean? It's eight o'clock. Okay, so it is actually this one because it's each of the alcoves in the recording studio are acoustics separate. Acoustics is a noun or a plural noun. It's not, uh, it's not like a adjective. Okay. It's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not like, mm, it's not, uh, it, it's not really, uh, goes into the sentence properly. It's more acoustically separate. Okay. It's not an adjective like that. 
it just doesn't go like that. And this one is actually correct. It's just in the form of a question. Okay. Okay, last one. What happens when ice instruments are too worn out by the end of winter? it said that they are allowed to be melted in the sun okay so you don't uh, they don't need it anymore and it's too worn out so instead of just repairing it they just uh, let it melt okay all right podium CC third place okay <laughs> New Hawken, aka Jason and in first we have Ed Okay, congratulations to all of you, and including Umbrella, I believe, and Top G. Okay. Oh, that's okay, right? You learn from your mistakes when you learn, right? It's okay if you press wrong ones. Okay, and that concludes today's class. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something interesting today. Okay, I shall see you all next week. And until then, Bye. have a wonderful day. Bye.